Good morning, good morning. Keisha Johnson here. Welcome to Waking Early for His Glory. You can find me here every Monday through Friday at 4.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Thank you so much for catching the replay. If you can be so kind and type in hashtag replay in the comments so I will know that you are watching. And if you are tuning in for the very first time, please type a number one in the comments so I can welcome you or so we all can welcome you. Good morning. Great morning, BFF Ricky. Good morning, Burita. Somebody type it in the comments god did it again it is a great day to be alive and let's go ahead and get ready to get logged in here so we can begin to share out the broadcast that's right ricky my hands are blessed these hands are oily and blessed if you have not grabbed your anointing oil make sure you have your oil and you have anointed your hands and listen, you all already know what to do. We are going to share out the broadcast. This is a fine time to evangelize. And one way to do that is by sharing this broadcast. And you can go ahead and share. Click, type in hashtag share and tag a friend that may want to join us as we are listening to um, the, the One Year Bible. All right. Good morning. Good morning. Let me go ahead and... um get this shared over onto my other um, community page. Uh, sometimes I remember to uh, share this over there and sometimes I don't. So <laughs> I remember it today. So let me go ahead and um, get this shared over there. Great morning, everyone. Good morning. All right, let's see. Hold on. Will Facebook let me share it? Yes, they are. Good morning, everybody. Somebody type in, my hands are blessed. I'm so excited for those of you we were able to uh, give another one-year Bible to on yesterday. All right, Facebook, let me just share it. Um, so don't you, you all don't forget we have the Waking Early for His Glory uh, resource page. I don't go live on that page, but I do share stuff over there. So um, that's where I'm sharing the video over to right now. Good morning, everybody. All right, we're all set. Hold on, hold the line. All right, Facebook. Okay, here we go. So you go ahead and make sure that you share the broadcast. Go ahead and share into the community groups. Go ahead and share onto your personal pages. Uh, this week, I don't know, for me has been so exciting with the one year Bibles we've been able to give away. And then I can't remember who, I didn't write the name of the person down that I tagged for your oil. So don't forget to um, send me your, um, your mailing address so I can get that out to you. And I have uh, the two one-year Bibles that I'm supposed to mail out today will get sent out today. So anyway, y'all go ahead and type in the comments. God did it again. It is a great day to be alive. And I'm so thankful and so grateful that God has allowed us to see another day. If you have not shared the video yet, go ahead and do that. Um, go ahead and share what time did you go to bed last night? What time did you go to bed this morning? Um, I went to bed somewhere in the 11 o'clock hour, I believe, and got up at 3.15. Uh, so I got up. My flesh tried to say, it's all right. You can go on and lay back down for just a little while. It's a trap. If I were to lay back down, I would not have gotten back up. So I said, no, let me get up. <laughs> You would like some as well. Um, so I that yesterday that was a giveaway, but there is some available on um, the website. Somebody typed this in for me. I think there's probably about four or five left. Um, as soon as I post them, uh, post it, add more to the website, they all go. So I think I have like five uh, packages from yesterday to send off today. So someone type shopkeishajohnson.com. So if you want your oil, that's on there. If you want your uh, Waking Early for His Glory journal, um, that's on there as well. And those of you that ordered your journals yesterday, uh, yesterday they went out yesterday. I was like, yes, you ordered yesterday. They went out yesterday. <laughs> I love it when that happens. All right, so let's get going. Um, you know what to do. And also, if you all don't mind, I'm working on something. Please share where you are tuning in from, if you don't mind sharing where you're tuning in from. And we're going to go ahead and get started. 
um, if you are on this broadcast live or if you, that's right, God did it again. Ruth, that's right, he did it again. So good to see you this morning. If you're on this broadcast live or if you are catching the replay, that means that you, thank you, Anna, you were on the wake up list and that's not a small thing. So we are just going to take a moment to thank the Father. So I want you all to type at least one thing in the comments that you're thankful for. Um, and then we will dive in. So if you're new to the broadcast, we will start with our devotional. And then the second half of the broadcast, we will be listening and reading the one year Bible together, which has become my favorite <laughs> part of the broadcast where I get to get out of the way and we just listen to the words. So I love it. So Father, we honor you. Father, we love you. Go ahead and type in the comments. God, we thank you. God, we appreciate you. We honor you. We love you. We appreciate you. We are so incredibly thankful for you. You are a good, good father. And we just want to say Thank you. Somebody type that in. We are thankful for health. We are thankful for life. We are thankful that your mercies are new every morning. Father, we want to thank you for protecting us through the night from things that we have no idea. No idea that you've protected us from. We say thank you. We thank you for being our provider. We thank you for being our protector. We thank you for being our deliverer. We thank you for being our healer. We thank you for being all that we need. We say thank you. That's right. Mel says, I'm thankful for his love. Listen, incredibly thankful. Tamika, good morning. She says, I thank God for traveling grace and arriving mercy. Amen. He is just such a good father. We thank you, Father, for a sound mind. We thank you for a sound mind. We thank you for waking us up with a mind to want to spend time with you. We thank you for waking us up with a mind to want to spend time in your word. We say thank you. You all continue typing in the comments what you're thankful for. And um, I'm going to go ahead and start with our opening verse for today. All right. And so this week, we're just going to make sure that everyone gets their Bibles. Um, someone yesterday, um, listen, and this right here, let me just say this, I didn't even expect this. I just thought I'll do a few Bible giveaways here and there because I don't normally do that on live. I kind of just, you know, when someone messages me and says I don't have a Bible, if I can, then I go ahead and bless them. So over the years, I've given away, I don't know how many um, of uh, these one-year Bibles. If you know me, you know, I don't know. It's just something about this one-year Bible that is just near and dear to me. And so we have a total of, I think, four or five more. So next week, um, I'll do that. We'll, I won't do it today. We'll just kind of just finish getting it, every, making sure everyone gets the Bibles that we sent out and the oil that we sent out and then um, next week we'll do a couple of more um, giveaways so I don't know I'm so excited God is so good because that was so unexpected anyway um, yeah if I could just get one of these one year Bibles into everybody's hands I would <laughs> so our opening verse for today is Matthew 21 42. Someone type that in the comments. Good morning, Yolanda L. Smith. So good to see you this morning. Um, Matthew 21, 42. It's good to see everybody, but it was good to see her name pop up. Um, Matthew 21, 42. It says, Jesus said to them, have you never read in the scriptures the stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone? Let me read that again. You're welcome. Jesus said to them, have you never read in the scriptures the stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone? And for those of you that are just tuning in, if you don't mind, go ahead and share the broadcast. Um, you never know who needs to know, who needs to hear um, or see what it is that we are doing here. And my goal is to get as many people as we can listening to the One Year Bible. Because listen, so many people, let me just say this, I don't have time to read the word. I don't have time. I don't have time. I don't have time. Somebody type in hashtag 20 minutes. It only takes 20 minutes, 20 minutes a day. 20 minutes a day, somebody type in hashtag 20 minutes and somebody type in hashtag I will read my Bible, hashtag I will read my Bible. Um, 
So our devotional for today is coming from the Father's Heart Ministry. You can find them here on Facebook. All right, it says, when someone rejects you, rejects you, they are rejecting my creation whom I love. They are rejecting me in you. The enemy wants you to take it personally. Somebody type in the comments, I will not take it personally. Listen, as a matter of fact, we shouldn't take anything personally. I am learning that whether it's good, whether it's bad, I don't take anything personally. Or at least I should say I'm trying to get to that place <laughs> where I don't take anything personally. All right. <clears throat> If he can get you into the trap of taking this personally, then he can steal, he can kill, and he can destroy. And listen, that is the only plan that the enemy has for our life. But somebody say, but God, the enemy comes to steal, he comes to kill, and he comes to destroy for no other reason. And if he can get you to take the rejection personally, then he can kill he can just, he can steal, he can kill, and he can destroy. And listen, if you've been following me for any amount of time, you know that is a subject that God will not let me steer away from because I am here to tell you, rejection is a very nasty spirit. Rejection is a very ugly spirit. And that spirit tried to take me out before I even stepped foot on the earth. Somebody say, but God but God. So I think I have every book probably that every Christian author has written on the subject of rejection. Oh, somebody placed an order this morning. Thank you for whoever that was at for something in the morning. I appreciate you. And so that's a nasty spirit that tried to take me out. But God, the enemy's plan was to steal, was to kill, and to destroy. But God had other plans, all right? So it's a very nasty spirit, all right? So listen, if he can get you to fall into the trap of taking this rejection personally, then he can kill, he can steal, he can kill, and he can destroy you. Somebody say, oh, but God. Render the enemy harmless and of no effect. See rejection for what it is to take you down and to take you out. That, that spirit has no other plan other than to take you down and to take you out. Somebody say he tried it, but it didn't work. He tried it, but it didn't work. Never forget when you take rejection personally, you are keeping this attack in your flesh in, in your flesh realm where the enemy can win. But when you release all rejection to me, somebody say all rejection. When you release all rejection to me, this battle is kept in my spirit realm where I have already won. Somebody say. I will not take it personally. And see, here's the thing also. There's real rejection and then there's perceived rejection. Sometimes we think we're being rejected and we're not even being rejected. But that nasty, ugly spirit will have you thinking everything is rejection. But there is real rejection and there is perceived rejection. Hashtag ask me how I know. Good morning, Amy King. So good to see you. All right. People reject you when they do not understand something or when they are intimidated by my presence in you. That's a whole word right there. And that is the whole truth and nothing but the truth. All right. People reject you when they do not understand something or when they are intimidated by my presence in you. Somebody say, I will not take it personally. Yes, yes, release all of it. Release, release it all and release it immediately. Somebody type in immediately. Release it and release it immediately. Immediately. Somebody saying they can't find me. All right, it is nothing personal. Somebody say, it's not personal. It's not personal. It's not personal. You are my inheritance. I will never reject you, says the Father. Today, if someone rejects you, consider it a rejection of me. Listen, we cannot take it personal because let me tell you, I am here to tell you, I am here to tell you, the enemy has no other plan for you but to steal. I need to print that. What date is that? I don't know. What date? What did I say? 
you need to print what for what date I, I don't know I'm not sure I don't know what I said <laughs> all right so listen so our opening verse again was Matthew 21 42 Jesus said to them have you never read in the scriptures the stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone so listen, I need you to release it, and I need you to release it immediately. A lot of times, uh, whatever, this thing is flying the time around. Um, a lot of times we're holding on to rejection. We're holding on to these things, and it can literally affect our health. So there are some of you on this broadcast that when you begin to release that rejection, you know, all of that, the sickness and disease, the headaches, you know, and all of the other things that you're struggling with will begin to go away as well. Hashtag ask me how I know because it took me releasing anger and bitterness and rejection and all of those things. And even in that, my face began to clear up. The headache stopped. I was able to sleep better, you know, when I began to release all of that stuff. All right, so that's our devotional for today. And I wrote down a few things, just a few things that, um, that I wanted to talk about today. All right, so we're going to talk about um, the fear of rejection. Because listen, there's a lot of you, listen, this is the spirit is, 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 you know, spirit of fear. It's causing so many of you to not do what it is you know, that God has called you to do. The fear of rejection is causing even, yes, 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 yes. Yep. Great weight, great weight. Um, and so listen, a lot of times I tell the ladies, you know, that this whole journey, and I think that's why I try to always combine the both, you know, like here we're on waking early for his glory. I'm like, you know, make sure you have your water, you know, make sure you, Oh, it's empty. I'm going to need another, need to grab another bottle. Make sure you take in your vitamins every day, you know, just whatever, you know, because it's so important. So anyway, this weight loss journey is not just physical, it's spiritual as well. And it takes releasing a whole lot of unwanted weight in the spirit, right? Things like rejection, right? Things like fear, things like, uh, you know, anger, things like rage, you know, you have to let go, release that unwanted weight in the spirit then the weight, it, the physical, the weight and the natural will begin to fall off, you know? So a lot of times, you know, listen, unforgiveness is a big one. You release that unwanted weight in the spirit of, of unforgiveness, the weight will begin to come off. I'm telling you. All right. So let's talk about the fear of rejection and I'm going to have to go grab another bottle of vitamins real quick. Um, the fear of re the fear of rejection. What is it? The fear of not receiving approval. It is the fear of not being accepted. And those two are a motivating factor for so many decisions in life, even in our ordinary day to day lives. All right. And so I want to talk about a few things that um, rejection produces. All right. Rejection produces a number of um, I think that one is half empty, too. I need like a whole full bottle, but it's over on my cabinet. I'll grab one. Thank you. <laughs> Two weeks, it's like it's one, it's a bottle behind you. Uh, rejection produces a number of emotions in us the feeling of impotence and inadequacy. All right, it produces the feeling of being unaccepted. I've been there before. Somebody raise your hand if you've ever felt unaccepted, if you ever, ever felt inadequate, right? And rejection also produces the feeling of doing something wrong or giving the wrong impression. All right. Somebody say the devil is a liar. Good morning, Jasmine. Good morning, Rhonda. Good morning to all of you that are just tuning in. Please go ahead and share the broadcast. We want others to know what we are doing here. We will not be stingy, right? Go ahead and share the broadcast and come back and type in hashtag share. All right. And so we're going to go to the Bible and look at Jesus's response to rejection in his own hometown. All right. So who are we to think that we won't experience rejection or allow it to cause us to completely fall apart because we were rejected? Somebody type in the comments. I won't take it personal. I won't take it personal. All right. So 
um, we're going to read Mark 6, verses 1 through 6. Mark 6, verses 1 through 6. Jesus left there and went to his hometown, accompanied by his disciples. When the Sabbath came, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were amazed. That's right, the devil is a liar. Where did this man get these things, they asked? What's this wisdom that has been given him, that he even does miracles? Isn't this the carpenter? Like... Ain't that just Keisha from Parkside Avenue? Who does she think she is? Isn't that that, that skinny little Keisha that used to wear them big, thick red glasses and funny clothes from around the corner over on Parkside and Flatbush Avenue? Who's she? Isn't that just Keisha from around the corner? Isn't this the carpenter? Isn't this Mary's son, the brother of James, Joseph, Judas, and Simon? Aren't his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Like, who does she think she is? Isn't that just Keisha from Parkside? Isn't her mother named Elaine? Isn't that, isn't her, aren't her sisters? Isn't that Keisha, uh, Toya, Libra, and Junior? And they will take offense at who you are. Say, I won't take it personal. I won't take it personal. And they took offense at him. Jesus said to him, only in his hometown, among his relatives, and in his own house is a prophet without honor. He could not do any miracles there except lay his hands on a few sick people and heal them. And he was amazed at their lack of faith. That's right, Denise. Fear equals limited victories. I love that. Fear equals limited victories. All right. And so he faced he faced rejection, not with fear, but he faced it with amazement, right? Does somebody say, I won't take it personal? So Jesus faced a rejection, not with fear, but with amazement, right? And so I wrote, I pulled a few notes. He did not fall into the trap of feeling responsible for other people's feelings. We cannot feel responsible or fall into the trap of feeling responsible for other people's feelings. Is this hurting? Is this helping anybody this morning? Let me turn off these notifications. They're still going off. Hold the line. All right. And so another thing he did, um, he did not or did not do. He did not fall into the trap of feeling responsible for other people's feelings or other people's opinions. Somebody say other people's opinions of me are none of my business. <laughs> Other people's opinions of me is not is none of my business. What you think about me is none of my business. What you have to say about me is none of my business. Somebody go on and say, it's not my business. And there is so much freedom in getting to that place where you're like, other people's opinions of me, it's none of my business. All right. And he did not fall into the trap of trying to justify himself. He did not fall into the trap of trying to justify himself. What is this thing? I hate stuff flying around. Hold the line. I got it. Whatever it was is dead now. All right. Nor did he cave. I did not need to do all that on Facebook Live. Nor did he cave into and give up or protest or stomp out. <laughs> All right. Jesus is a great example for us to follow. Somebody go ahead and type in the comments. I won't take it personal. I won't take it personal. Other people's opinions of me are none of my business. All right, so what else do we have here? How to overcome the rejection complex. Y'all laughing at me? I'm laughing at myself. I was like, Keisha, really? Did you really just do that? How to overcome the rejection complex. So there's some of you on here, let me just say this again, that are afraid to go live, right? You know God has been telling you to go live and open up your mouth and say whatever it is that he has put in your heart to say, right? And you're afraid, you're afraid of going live. Hit the live button. Hit the live button. It's not about being perfect. All right. I literally just smashed a something flying around. I got it on Facebook Live. And then I had to think about it. All right. So just hit the live button. And that God is not looking for you to be perfect. He's just looking for your obedience. 
that's it all right how to come though how to overcome the rejection complex number one we must know who we are and what we have in Christ we must know who we are and what we have in Christ we must know who we are and what we have in Christ Jesus knew who he was and he knew where he was going he knew who he was and he knew where he was going all right, he knew exactly who he was and he knew exactly where he was going. All right, number two, we must be consumed with our destiny and purpose in life. Somebody type in hashtag consumed. We must be consumed with our destiny and our purpose in life. And consume is to, I looked up the word consume. We know what it means, but it's always fun looking up words, right? Consume is to devour, to ingest and to use up that's right hit the live button i don't know that was some for somebody hit the live button and if you do if you when you when you do tag me so i can watch it somebody i don't know who it's for you haven't hit the live button yet but you need to hit the live button and when you do tag me all right consume is to devour ingest and to use up so number one we must know exactly who we are and what we have in christ we must be consumed with our destiny and purpose in life okay jesus was totally completely consumed with his mission so much so it didn't he was so consumed with his mission it didn't matter what other people had to say when you know exactly who you are, when you know exactly where you are going, when you are totally consumed with all the other stuff, won't even matter. All right? It won't even matter. So those are the only two points that I pulled from what we read. Those are the only two points. So my question for you is that I want to leave you all with. Are you truly consumed? Or I wrote this to myself, so I'll just read it how I wrote it. Am I? And that's for all of us. Am I truly consumed with God's purpose being fulfilled in my life? Am I totally, am I truly consumed with God's purpose being fulfilled in my life? And yes, I did. I sat down. I took the time to write it out in my journal here, my Waking Early for His Glory journal. So I want you to do the same thing. Am I truly consumed with God's purpose being fulfilled in my life? All right. So that's all I have. That's all I have. And I want you all to meditate on Mark 6, 1 through 6 today someone type that in the comments for me mark 6 1 through 6 is what you're meditating on and i want you to pull your own points you know and things that you've ob you observed um from that scripture uh, i want to leave you all with another a few more um verses on rejection all right if someone can type these in the comments for me first peter 2 4 first peter 2 4 yes yes elizabeth Yes, and I thank and praise him for it. First Peter 2, 4. First Peter 2, 4. Oh, that's Soraya. She has to be at work at 6 this morning. I'm like, what's all that noise in the hallway? Um, so she gets up really early. Um, First Peter 2, 4. And the second one is First Peter 5, 8. Someone type this in for me. First Peter 5, 8. First Peter 5, 8. First Peter 5, 8. <laughs> Hold on, I have to share this to someone in Messenger. She's like, I'm scrolling your page. I don't see you. Um, Isaiah 53.3. Isaiah 53.3. Isaiah 53.3. Is this helping anybody today? I need you all to say, I won't take it personal. I won't take it personal. Again, there is real rejection and there's perceived rejection. And we must know the difference. I used to run around just every just feeling like everybody and every just feeling rejected all the time the devil is a liar I don't don't take it personal um john 1 11 john 1 11 and i'm not gonna lie to you i still struggle with it every now and then but i'm like all right i, I, I see you. you have to see it for what it is you have to see it for what it is you know listen the enemy has no new tricks no new tricks he might come at you different ways he might use different people but he has no new tricks somebody type in the comments no new tricks <laughs> he has no new tricks and i'm like wait hey wait a minute not today have to let him not today say and not today he has no new tricks no new tricks 
And the last verse I want to leave you all with is John 15, 18. And listen, I am not where I need to be or would like to be, but I thank God I'm not where I used to be. I have come a long way and it has taken me, you know, studying, reading the word, you know, reading all different kinds of books on this very subject, you know, because listen, that spirit of rejection tried to take me out even before I stepped foot on the earth. It's like, oh, wait a minute. I know exactly who she is. Let me take her out before she figures out who she is. See, did y'all hear me? Let me take her out before she figures out who she is. Because some of us don't know who we are, but the enemy knows exactly who we are. And he knew exactly who Keisha Johnson was. Keisha, I didn't know who I was for a really long time. Oh, oh, but I know now. But I know now. And I thank God that he did not allow the enemy to have his way with me. You found her book in a thrift store. All right, where was I? Did I leave you all with um, with um, all of the verses? I believe I did. I have our scripture, our declaration for today is, I decree and declare that I will release all rejection to the Lord immediately. Hashtag waking early for his glory. Someone type this in the comments for me. I decree and declare that I will release all rejection to the Lord immediately. Hashtag waking early for his glory. Release it. Release it. Release it. While you're at it, that unforgiveness, release it. That anger, release it. That offense, release it. Just release all of it. Get rid of all the unwanted weight. Get rid of all the unwanted weight. And watch those of you that are feeling like you're struggling on your weight loss journey. Watch the weight begin to fall off. Those of you that are like, I'm, I, I'm having problems with my skin. I've tried everything. Release all that unwanted weight. Your skin will begin to clear up. You know, because we can do all we want to do on the outside. But what's going on on the outside is a manifestation of what's going on on the inside. So some of you all get frustrated with me. Why won't you just tell me what the skincare regimen is? Because I want to talk to you on the phone. Because I need you to know you can spend all kinds of money taking care of the outside. But if you're not dealing with on, what's on the inside, it's a waste of time. So I like to talk to you all on the phone. All right, so that's it. That's it. That's it. That was a little rabbit trail. Release it. Release the unwanted weight. Release all the weight in the spirit. And watch things. Watch, watch everything change for you. Watch, I, I promise you. All right, so that's it. What are we, where were we at? What are we doing? Um, if you're new to the broadcast and you made it this far, thank you. I am so glad. Uh, we are about to move into the second half of the broadcast, um, which is where we are listening to and reading through the One Year Bible. All right, and so we are about to do that now. So if you have to, go ahead and grab your water. Um, go ahead and grab your vitamins. Is today August 14th? Hey, my birthday is on Sunday. My birthday is on Sunday. Uh, there was a time where I would never even share that because I never like to celebrate myself, right? But I don't have that problem anymore. My birthday is on Sunday, and I'm so excited. <laughs> All right, so grab your water, grab your journals, grab your Bibles, grab your vitamins. Let me see if this is enough for today. If it's not enough, I need to get up and get another bottle. Um, mm -mm, that wasn't enough. All right, so I'm going to go grab my bottles. Let me go ahead and get us started, and then I'll go and grab my other bottle. All right, you all, so did this help anybody? Go ahead and begin to share your takeaways, share what stood out to you, um, share what you will do differently because of what you heard. Yes, it's a national holiday on Sunday. Um, and if you have not shared today, uh, now is a fine time to share the video as we are about to listen to the One Year Bible. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna hit play and then go grab another bottle of my vitamins. That might not work because then I have to get a knife and cut the top on me. <laughs> All right, here we go. If you can hear this, okay, type a two in the comments. My reading in the 
Old Testament today will be from the book of Nehemiah, chapter Let's 7. Let's go ahead and share so and others can listen with us. We'll go through chapter 9, verse 21. And here's what we'll find as we read today. We'll find the city of God. Every ministry at home needs gatekeepers and guards. For after a work is finished, it must be protected oh, from the enemy. I'll be right back. We also back. need leaders with courage and integrity. After all, there is a battle going right on. Back. We'll read about the people of God. The record of the original returnees helped Nehemiah determine who should become a citizen of Jerusalem. For he did not uh, want any of the mixed multitude to come in and cause more trouble. One of the most difficult things in the Christian life is maintaining the purity of the faith and of the fellowship. Then we'll learn about the word of God. When Nehemiah arrived in Jerusalem in 444 BC, Ezra was already there instructing the people in God's law. When the work of rebuilding was completed, Ezra held a great Bible conference, if you will, during the Feast of Tabernacles. They honored God's word by standing when it was opened, listening when it was read, and seeking to understand it when it was explained. They rejoiced at understanding the word, and they rejoiced at obeying the word. And with that, let's begin today's reading in the Old Testament. There we go. August 14th. Nehemiah chapter 7, verse 73b through chapter 9, verse 21. Now in mid-autumn, when the Israelites had settled in their towns, all the people assembled together as one person at the square just inside the water gate. They asked Ezra the scribe to bring out the book of the law of Moses, which the Lord had given for Israel to obey. So on October 8th, Ezra the priest brought the scroll of the law before the assembly which included the men and women and all the children old enough to understand. He faced the square just inside the water gate from early morning until noon and read aloud to everyone who could understand. All the people paid close attention to the book of the law. Ezra the scribe stood on a high wooden platform that had been made for the occasion. To his right stood Mattathiah, Shema, Aniah, Uriah, Hilkiah, and Mahasiah, to his left stood Fediah, Mishael, Melchijah, Hashum, Is the volume okay? Ashpadana, Zechariah, and Meshulam. Ezra stood on the platform in full view of all the people. When they saw him open the book, they all rose to their feet. Then Ezra praised the Lord, the great God, and all the people chanted, Amen, Amen, as they lifted their hands toward heaven. Then they bowed down and worshipped the Lord with their faces to the ground. Now the Levites, Jeshua, Bani, Sherebiah, Jamin, Akub, Shabbathai, Hodiah, Mahasiah, Gelita, Azariah, Josabad, Hanan, and Peliah instructed the people who were standing there. They read from the book of the law of God and clearly explained the meaning of what was being read helping the people understand each passage. Then Nehemiah, the governor, Ezra, the priest and scribe, and the Levites who were interpreting for the people said to them, Don't weep on such a day as this, for today is a sacred day before the Lord your God. All the people had been weeping as they listened to the words of the law. And Nehemiah continued, Go and celebrate with a feast of choice foods and sweet drinks and share gifts of food with people who have nothing prepared. This is a sacred day before our Lord. Don't be dejected and sad, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. And the Levites, too, quieted the people, telling them, Hush, don't weep, for this is a sacred day. So the people went away to eat and drink at a festive meal, to share gifts of food and to celebrate with great joy because they had heard God's words and understood them. On October 9th, the family leaders and the priests and Levites met with Ezra to go over the law in greater detail. As they studied the law, they discovered that the Lord had commanded through Moses that the Israelites should live in shelters during the festival to be held that month. He had said that a proclamation should be made throughout their towns and especially in Jerusalem telling the people to go to the hills 
to get branches from olive, wild olive, myrtle, palm, and fig trees. They were to use these branches to make shelters in which they would live during the festival, as it was prescribed in the law. So the people went out and cut branches and used them to build shelters on the roofs of their houses, in their courtyards, in the courtyards of God's temple, or in the squares just inside the water gate and the Ephraim gate. So everyone who had returned from captivity lived in these shelters for seven days of the festival, and everyone was filled with great joy. The Israelites had not celebrated this way since the days of Joshua, son of Nun. Ezra read from the book of the law of God on each of the seven days of the festival. Then, on October 15th, they held a solemn assembly, as the law of Moses required. On October 31st, the people returned for another observance. This time they fasted and dressed in sackcloth and sprinkled dust on their heads. Those of Israelite descent separated themselves from all foreigners as they confessed their own sins and the sins of their ancestors. The book of the law of the Lord their God was read aloud to them for about three hours. Then for three more hours, they took turns confessing their sins and worshiping the Lord their God. Some of the Levites were standing on the stairs, crying out to the Lord their God. Their names were Jeshua, Bani, Kadmael, Shebaniah, Bunai, Cherubiah, Bani, and Kenani. Then the leaders of the Levites, Jeshua, Kadmiel, Bani, Hashabaniah, Sherebiah, Hodiah, Shebaniah, and Pethahiah called out to the people, Stand up and praise the Lord your God, for he lives from everlasting to everlasting. Then they continued, Praise his glorious name. It is far greater than we can think or say. You alone are the Lord. You made the skies and the heavens and all the stars. You made the earth and the seas and everything in them. You preserve and give life to everything, and all the angels of heaven worship you. You are the Lord God who chose Abram and brought him from Ur of the Chaldeans and renamed him Abraham. When he had proved himself faithful, you made a covenant with him to give him and his descendants the land of the Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Perizzites, Jebusites, and Girgashites. And you have done what you promised, for you are always true to your word. You saw the sufferings and sorrows of our ancestors in Egypt, and you heard their cries from beside the Red Sea. You displayed miraculous signs and wonders against Pharaoh, his servants, and all his people, for you knew how arrogantly the Egyptians were treating them. You have a glorious reputation that has never been forgotten. You divided the sea for your people so they could walk through on dry land. And then you hurled their enemies into the depths of the sea. They sank like stones beneath the mighty waters. You led our ancestors by a pillar of cloud during the day and a pillar of fire at night so that they could find their way. You came down on Mount Sinai and spoke to them from heaven. You gave them regulations and instructions that were just and laws and commands that were true. You instructed them concerning the laws of your holy Sabbath, and you commanded them through Moses your servant to obey all your commands, laws, and instructions. You gave them bread from heaven when they were hungry, and water from the rock when they were thirsty. You commanded them to go and take possession of the land you had sworn to give them. But our ancestors were a proud and stubborn lot and they refused to obey your commands. They refused to listen and did not remember the miracles you had done for them. Instead, they rebelled and appointed a leader to take them back to their slavery in Egypt. But you are a God of forgiveness, gracious and merciful, slow to become angry, and full of unfailing love and mercy. You did not abandon them, even though they made an idol shaped like a calf and said, This is your God, who brought you out of Egypt. They sinned and committed terrible blasphemies. But in your great mercy, you did not abandon them to die in the wilderness. The pillar of cloud still led them forward by day, and the pillar of fire showed them the way through the night. You sent your good spirit to instruct them, 
And you did not stop giving them bread from heaven or water for their thirst. For 40 mm. years, you sustained them in the wilderness. They lacked nothing in all that time. Their clothes did not wear out, and their feet did not swell. Did y'all hear all that? Somebody type in the comments. God, I thank you. August 14th. What a wonderful Today, as we God look into we serve. The New Testament, we'll be reading from the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 9, verses 1 through 18. And uh, let's look at what the word We're says. We're moving into the New Testament. Go ahead and share. You know, we do not have the right to give up our freedom, for that was purchased by Christ. But we do have the freedom to give up our rights. For the sake of winning the lost, Paul gave up his right to receive financial support. And he begged the Corinthians to give up their rights for the sake of the saved. Christian ministry is like fighting a war. Caring for a vine, a vineyard, tending a flock, and cultivating a field. Meditate on these images and see what they teach you about serving the Lord. Ministry is stewardship, and the servant must be faithful. Ministers of Christ are also like runners who must keep the rules or be disqualified. And in a few of these verses, we'll see that they call for courtesy and wisdom in witness, not for compromise. I have become all things to all men. Does not mean Paul had no personal convictions. No, not at all. It means he used his convictions to build bridges, not walls. If he seemed inconsistent, it was only because people did not look deep enough. His one overriding and great desire was to win the lost, mm -hmm. and that governed his every decision. Mm -hmm. It was Howard W. Newton who wrote, Tact is the art of making a point without mm -hmm. making an enemy. And with that, let's begin now our reading today in the New yes, Testament. Monette. Yes, Monet. August 14th. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 1 through 18. Do I, Paul, not have as much freedom as anyone else? Am I not an apostle? Haven't I seen Jesus our Lord with my own eyes? Isn't it because of my hard work that you are in the Lord? Even if others think I am not an apostle, I certainly am to you, for you are living proof that I am the Lord's apostle. This is my answer to those who question my authority as an apostle. Don't we have the right to live in your homes and share your meals? Don't we have the right to bring your Christian wife along with us as the other disciples and the Lord's brothers and Peter do? Or is it only Barnabas and I who have to work to support ourselves? What soldier has to pay his own expenses? And have you ever heard of a farmer who harvests his crop and doesn't have the right to eat some of it? What shepherd takes care of a flock of sheep and isn't allowed to drink some of the milk. And this isn't merely human opinion. Doesn't God's law say the same thing? For the law of Moses says, do not keep an ox from eating as it treads out the grain. Do you suppose God was thinking only about oxen when he said this? Wasn't he also speaking to us? Of course he was. Just as farm workers who plow fields and thresh the grain expect a share of the harvest, Christian workers should be paid by those they serve. We have planted good spiritual seed among you. Is it too much to ask in return for mere food and clothing? If you support others who preach to you, shouldn't we have an even greater right to be supported? Yet we have never used this right. We would rather put up with anything than put an obstacle in the way of the good news about Christ. Don't you know that those who work in the temple get their meals from the food brought to the temple as offerings? And those who serve at the altar get a share of the sacrificial offerings. In the same way, the Lord gave orders that those who preach the good news should be supported by those who benefit from it. Mm. Yet, I have never used any of these rights. And I'm not writing this to suggest that I would like to start now. In fact, I would rather die than lose my distinction of preaching without charge. For preaching the good news is not something I can boast about. I am compelled by God to do it. How terrible for me if I didn't do it. If I were doing this of my own free will, then I would deserve payment. 
that God has chosen me and given me this sacred trust, and I have no choice. What then is my pay? It is the satisfaction I get from preaching the good news without expense to anyone, never demanding my rights as a preacher. Today we'll be reading Psalm 33, verses 12 through 22. We'll see God's word in worship. We dare not separate worship from the word of God, for we must worship in truth. The better we know the scriptures, the better we'll be able to praise him. Mm -hmm. We'll see God's word in creation. God spoke the universe into existence, and his word controls it. What a powerful word that is. We'll see God's word in history as we read through this psalm. The nations may confederate and rebel against God, but you know what? His word will prevail. Military strength is no guarantee of success. God has a plan for the nations, and he will fulfill you it. all okay? And we'll see God's word in your life. The word that created and controls the universe can also control your life. When you trust his word and obey it, all the universe works for you. When you abandon that word, all the universe works against you. Never fear the will of God, because it comes from the heart of God. Psalm 33, verses 12 through 22. What joy for the nation whose God is the Lord, whose people he has chosen for his own. The Lord looks down from heaven and sees the whole human race. From his throne he observes all who live on the earth. He made their hearts so he understands everything they do. The best equipped army cannot save a king, nor is great strength enough to save a warrior. Don't count on your war horse to give you victory. For all its strength, it cannot save you. But the Lord watches over those who fear him, those who rely on his unfailing love. He rescues them from death and keeps them alive in times of famine. We depend on the Lord alone to save us. Only he can help us, protecting us like a shield. In him, our hearts rejoice. For we are trusting in his holy name. Let your unfailing love surround us, Lord. For our hope is in you alone. Somebody type amen in the comments. Somebody type amen Proverbs for me. Proverbs 21, verses mm. 11 and 12. A simpleton can learn only by seeing mockers punished. A wise person learns from instruction. The righteous one knows what's going on in the homes of the wicked. He will bring the wicked to disaster. Yes, so Father, we thank you for the reading of your word. We thank you for your word that leads us. We thank you for your word that guides us. And we thank you, Father, for your word that protects us. In Jesus' name, and everybody say amen. Y'all, listen, so I want us to read and reread um, the prayer in Nehemiah, um, starting from verse 5 all the way through verse 21. And just meditate on that today. Just let it sink in. Let's let it soak in. We serve an awesome God, all right? And our um, key verses for today is from Psalm 33, verses 20, 21, and 22, we put our hope in the Lord. He is our help and our shield. In him, our hearts rejoice, for we trust in his holy name. Let your unfailing love surround us, Lord, for our hope is in you and you alone. So if you want to do the spec Bible study method or soap journaling, that is the those are the key verses for today. Um, what time is it? Soraya has to be at work at 6. Anthony has to get up at 5.30 and it's 5.24. So I'm going to run. Not like run, but I got to go. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so that's it. You all have an awesome weekend. Sunday is my birthday. I wasn't going to share. I'm usually real quiet with the exception of last year for the very first time. I made a big deal um, about my birthday. Never in all my 40 something years being on this earth that I make such a big deal. I'm usually like, oh, it's just my birthday. It's no big deal. It's a big deal. So I'm excited. Sunday is my birthday. Yes. 
Oh, Nehemiah, um, it was, I'm sorry, I, I'm, I can't assume everybody's reading in their Bibles with us. Nehemiah um, chapter 9. It was Nehemiah chapter 9, starting at verse 5. Um, Nehemiah 9, verse 5 through 21. Someone type that in for me. Nehemiah chapter 9, verses 5 through 21. All right, I have to go. I will share our declaration in the comments. Um, what else do I share in the comments? I'll share the, do I need to share the spec Bible study method in there again? I've shared it the last couple of days, so I won't share that. Um, if you want to get your oil, it's on the website, shopkeishajohnson.com. And I think there's only five left because as soon as I post them, y'all, y'all buy the oil. We anoint our hands in the morning. Um, if you want your vitamins, I will share the link for that. Most of you message me after the broadcast, but the vitamins are also on my other website. So I'll share the link for that. Um, and if y'all want to buy, listen, y'all want to, listen, y'all want to bless me with a birthday gift, just get your vitamins so we can drink our water, get your one year Bible so we can read our Bibles and take our vitamins together. That's all I want for my birthday. All right. So get your Bibles, get your vitamins get your oil, get your waking early for his glory journals so we can all do this together, right? Uh, that's all I want for my birthday. <laughs> Since y'all asked, what do you want for your birthday? All right, I have to go for real. Let me go and make sure Anthony gets up on time and Zariah's getting ready because we have to. she has to leave out at 5.50. All right, so I have to go. I love you all and I'll see y'all on Monday. All right, bye y'all. Thank you, Londa. Thank you. Bye y'all. Mm -hmm.